Number 10, Ye Olde Snapchat. Here we have a painting of a woman in the nude, relaxing yet confident in expressing her femininity. Painted by Francisco de Goya in 1790, it was privately commissioned and was never meant for public viewing. Alas, here I am talking about it on the internet. The woman depicted in this painting is supposedly based on de Goya's mistress. Realist style painters often use nudity from their own lives. They came from lower classes, prostitutes, actresses, and in this case, lovers. I was gonna make a joke about side chicks and nudes, but in all honesty, the paintings are well done and I know I I could never paint like that. This is a serious talent. My art projects were interesting to say the least. But maybe someone could paint me like that? At number 9, Easter Procession in a Village. For many years, religion influenced much of the art world. Many of the most famous pieces were some kind of depiction of a religious figure or religious event, and though some artists followed the unspoken rule of keeping these holy pieces family friendly, others didn't and it caused some tension. Vasily Perova's painting Easter Procession in a Village from 1861 was one of those paintings that faced some backlash for the content of the piece, not necessarily because it was NSFW, but because of how people were depicted in the painting. This art artist was known to paint the common folk rather than people of high status like other artists at the time. In his Easter piece, he portrayed a celebration of the religious holiday, however people were upset and felt disrespected by the activities that the subjects in the painting were taking part in. There were images of people in a drunken state, and it even showed a priest being crushed under the foot of a peasant, which was a huge no-no in the eyes of a lot of people. The artist was accused of immorality, but the piece still went on to gain fame. Number 8. The Awakening. The Birth of Venus. I could come out here and tell you guys that I'm a refined gentleman, a curator of the fine arts, in search of higher culture and the expression of true artistry. But the truth is I watch way too much reality TV for that to come anywhere close. But the closest we as a species can get to perfection, according to some highly educated art people that are way smarter than me, is Sandro Botticelli's The Birth of Venus. Probably the or one of the most famous paintings ever to come out of the Renaissance. Completed sometime in the 1480s and commissioned by the Medici family, this naked lady's got some history. She represents the new revival, the Renaissance, and all her tall standing beauty. However, this painting may not be for a younger audience, as she is naked and her bosom exposed. Also, there's not much coverage downstairs as her lady bits are close to being exposed. But still, a really historical painting. At number 7, Death of the Virgin. Back in the day, people took their religious paintings quite seriously and so they wanted everything to be done right, otherwise it became a scandal. Well, a scandal occurred with Caravaggio's painting, Death of a Virgin. This painting featured a depiction of the Virgin Mary with a very thin halo in a somber setting. This piece was commissioned from Caravaggio for a chapel in the church of San to Maria della Scala in Rome. And this artist was specifically chosen because he was known for how his paintings realistically depict human emotion. This painting did end up capturing the realism that the church was looking for, but they were still let down and got pretty upset about the final piece because it was very different than other religious pieces at the time. Usually when a saint was depicted in a painting, it would feature a choir of angels to give a sense of divinity to the piece, but Caravaggio didn't include this and stepped away from that style of painting. Unfortunately for the artist, the church rejected the piece and some believe that their rejection could have come from the painting's realism or from the fact that a lady of the night was used to model for Mary in the piece. At number 6, The Gross Clinic. These days, medical-based content is pretty popular. Medical dramas and medical TikToks have a lot of fans, and many of them don't see any problem with the gore that comes with the content, but back in the 1800s, it was a lot for audiences to handle, and that's why the piece called The Gross Clinic by Thomas Eakins faced scandal. This art piece that was labeled as shocking at the time featured Dr. Samuel D. Gross overseeing a surgical operation while doing a lecture for medical students. This piece was pretty controversial at the time because of the gore, seeing the surgical procedure really happening and with the blood in the image. But many other people saw this piece as a little unsettling because of how all the people in the painting looked so calm while there was a literal surgery being performed right in front of them. The only person who looked to be showing any emotion in the piece was a woman in the foreground of the painting who looked pretty triggered at the sight in front of her. Back when this painting was first released, it was controversial as heck, but now in more modern times, it's renowned as 
as an homage to science and medicine. At number five, Les Demoiselles d'Avignon. Picasso was one of the most renowned artists of modern times. His style of painting became iconic and he revolutionized modern art, but as he was beginning to find fame in the art world, he also faced some scandals when it came to some of his art pieces. One piece that caused some uproar from audiences was the painting titled Les Demoiselles d'Avignon. This piece featured five nude women in a brothel and was done in his signature cubist style. This piece not only shocked audiences, but other artists as well because of how unusual and mildly unsettling it looked. Some of the women depicted in the painting had regular faces, but two of them were painted to look as if they were wearing African masks. On top of that, it looked like the women were staring at the viewer, which just made audiences more freaked out by this piece. It was seen as too progressive in the art world for quite some time, but as the years went on, people came to appreciate its unusual style and nature. At number four, Myra. This next painting I'm about to tell you about is pretty creepy and it caused a scandal in the art world because of its context and the way it was created. This 1995 painting called Myra, created by Marcus Harvey, was based on the mugshot of serial killer Myra Hendley. Myra was a serial killer in the 60s who took the lives of a handful of children between the ages of 13 and 17. When Myra's original mugshot started gaining notoriety as it was circled around the world, the artist attempted to create a piece to show the quote, influence of photography over years of obsessive media replication. End quote. The painting looks like a newspaper printing of the mugshot, but upon closer inspection, you can see that the painting is made up of small handprints like those of a child. When it first debuted at the Sensation exhibit of young British artists at the Royal Academy of Art in London in 1997, it was one of the most important pieces at the show, but it was also seen as controversial among many artists. It was so hated by some that it was actually vandalized when two artists defaced the piece with ink and eggs. It was seen as controversial to the public because some believe that the painting was insensitive to the pain that the families of Myra's victims were dealing with. Oh. At number three, Yo Mama's Last Supper. Many artists use their artwork to speak on certain injustices, discrimination, and political controversies. This is a theme that we often see in today's modern art. Sometimes people can see it as powerful, and other times it results in backlash. In Renee Cox's piece, Yo Mama's Last Supper, we saw the artist use her artistic voice to speak on the portrayal of religious figures in art and how they're often portrayed as white. In this piece, she reimagined The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci by including black men and women in the piece. She painted Jesus and Judas as black women, and the rest of the disciples were black men. To her, this was a comment on the lack of racial and gender representation in Catholicism, despite the fact that there are many black Catholics in the world. It is a powerful piece, but that doesn't mean that everyone's going to like it. New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani called the piece anti-Catholic and accused it of quote, attacking people's ethnicity, end quote. Number two, the dream of the fisherman's wife, not safe for life. All right, when I saw this one, I thought I was being pranked. I didn't believe it. I thought there was no way. Oh my high friends, if there's a will, there's a way. Sorry about this one, editors, really. The Dream of the Fisherman's Wife was an Edo period Japanese print completed in 1814 by the most interesting Hokusai. I wouldn't recommend searching this one up at work. And I'm gonna be frank, you can use your imagination to fill in the rest, but the painting depicts a woman who is a big fan of calamari. So much so uh, that she's having what daytime soap operas would call an affair with said eight armed nautical beast and loving it. I don't know if this makes you blush, hate sea creatures, or scream and run away, but it's a thing. Japanese art and culture were more open than most as they explored a lot of different ideas through the years. Eroticism was just one of those ideas. I'm sure this had no influence on a similar technical media we know and some love today. Maybe we should do the top 10 most attractive sea creatures by how many limbs they have. Hey King Crab, how you doing? And finally, at number one, the guitar lesson. Following that piece of NSFW work, I'm here to bring you another pretty scandalous piece. The painting, The Guitar Lesson by Balthus, is disturbing to say the least. I mean, it's raunchy, but it's also kinda effed up. The painting depicts a music teacher and his student, who are totally not practicing any instruments. In the piece, you can actually see the guitar on the floor, and rather than having fingers on strings, there are fingers in other places. This caused quite a stir in the art world because of how inappropriate the content of this piece was, and it was so controversial that people have been refusing to display it since the 1970s. Now, I can't really speak too much on this piece because it's not exactly safe for YouTube, 
But if you really want to see this piece uncensored and read more about the controversy, then I recommend you hit up Google. I'd love to say more on this, but the gods of YouTube might smite me down if I do. Number 10, the blank canvas. On your way to greatness, others will attempt to take you down in competition, envy, or spite. That's how it works. However, some will go as far as to mimic you. Now sure, imitation is the best form of flattery, as they say, but what if that imitation far outreaches the lengths of your own efforts? Ooh, better call Saul. Robert Rosenberg was a painter who was gifted a painting from de Kooning, who was already a rising star in the art world. I finally got that sentence off, sorry about that. However, he got the bright idea to erase the painting and then use that blank canvas as his own work. Surely a blank canvas couldn't be so prolific and attract so many, right? Well, it did, and it's blank. Like, that's it, it's just blank, and his painting became more famous, so I don't know. I'm not gonna pretend I understand art because one dude did a can of soup and that was, it was Warhol, it wasn't Andy Warhol did a can of soup and it was really big, so. Number nine, the garden of earthly delights. Hieronymus Bosch triptych trippy wears Waldo painting. Boy, that was a tongue twister. Okay, that was a lot of words, but what you need to know is that the painting is that of the late 1400s creation, a la the Renaissance, and it's triptych, meaning it's divided into three sections. I'm pretty sure I've done a few of these in art class. They weren't very good though. The painting depicts people of all sorts wearing different degrees of clothing from nothing to barely anything at all, frolicking about in grasslands and waters with other mythical imagery and playfulness of the such. Little is known about the original interpretation, but I guess that's what makes art art, if you couldn't already tell. Chetty's more of a fart guy than an art guy. Oh, there's another one there. <laughs> Number eight, The Crying Boy. So basically, there's this very popular print of a painting. It's a boy crying. Now, there's different versions of it, but originally done by Bruno Amarillo. Bruno doesn't get much praise because his painting, well, it had some serious creep factor going on, and it's everywhere. Because the fact that it is a crying young man who's peering into the very depths of your soul might have something to do with that creepiness, too. Firefighters around the world, however, began to notice a pattern when putting out house fires. They noticed no smoke alarms, leaving the stove unattended, and this painting was quite common in households, except the painting was never damaged in these fires. The whole house could burn down, but the painting remained. And after putting out a few houses and the same painting keeps showing up and keeps surviving fires, same painting, different fires, same crying boy, well, I don't really need to tell you how messed up that is. Really creepy. However, as it turns out, there's a simple explanation. The print actually had a flame retardant chemical in its production, thus protecting it. Maybe just don't bring it around though, just in case. It could actually be starting the fire. Just put the baby around, just, just in case. At number seven, Christ in the Desert. So many artists over the years have created their own depictions of Jesus Christ in different settings. Most of the time, Jesus is shown to be looking like a ray of hope for people in the holiest of settings, often performing miracles or just being a savior. But in Ivan Kramowski's painting, Christ in the Desert, the artist takes a very different approach to his depiction of Jesus Christ, and it got him a lot of screw. In this piece, Jesus is seen sitting on a rock in the desert as part of his temptation by the devil in his 40 day fast after being baptized, but he is seen in a more human way, so to speak. Jesus looks tired with his hands clasped in front of him, almost giving a sense of hopelessness to the piece. People were shocked by the artist's portrayal of Jesus' suffering in the desert and called the piece blasphemous, saying that the artist desecrated something sacred by creating this painting. Though this was seen as controversial at the time, this piece became one of the artist's most famous famous and most powerful pieces of his career. Number six, love trumps all. We have seen a ton of ladies here. Turns out people really like to paint naked ladies. Almost as if people like art or something like that. But today we're switching up a little and throwing some male nudity in the pot. This lovely painting was painted in a short time frame, 1602 to 1603. Depicted in a more Vincent Omnia is Cupid in his boyish charm, trampling over musical instruments with a general feeling that love trumps all. And while I cannot deny that I love hugs and chocolate chip cookies from my mother, this painting shows a little bit more than just love. Cupid is posed in a way that reveals his, uh, his P. Chedil, his John Hancock, his chief of staff, his trouser snake, his German army helmet, his manhood. I think you guys get the point. All jokes aside, this painting became quite popular after it was finished, inspiring other artists in writing about such a magnificent piece of art. At number five, erased de Kooning. Imagine working so hard on something just for someone to erase it and pawn it off as their own. Well, this is what caused a pretty big scandal in the art world between American artist Robert Rosenberg and Dutch American artist de Kooning. In 1953, de Kooning was a legend in the art world, and Rosenberg asked 
asked him if he could have one of his artworks. At first, he was hesitant to give it up, but eventually de Kooning gave up one of his pieces. I'm sure he certainly regretted that decision after seeing what Rauschenberg did to it afterwards. A few months after owning the de Kooning piece, Rauschenberg erased it and called it his own. Yes, he erased the whole thing until the canvas was blank and then published it as his own piece. First of all, it wasn't a very nice thing to do to another artist's hard work, but on top of that, it had people questioning whether this was even art. I mean, the canvas was literally blank. According to Rauschenberg, his intention with all this was to quote, attack abstract expressionism and give artistic value to the destruction of one of its artworks. Number three, the face of war. Here's another totally not nightmare inducing painting from Salvador Dali. The guy had some weird paintings. This time of the horrors of war. The face of war is the face of a person with other screaming faces in the eyes and in the mouth. Besides the horrific screaming, the main face has a rather sour disposition. The painting was intended to be anti-war which was very important for the time as it was painted in 1940 when Europe was at war. However, it could also be a reminder to those that survived the previous war, World War I. It was awful for most, but even after it was long over, no one really got the help they needed for shell shock, or in today's terms, PTSD. At least we got this painting though, right? That shows how bad it is. We'll never do that again, right? We're probably gonna do it again. Number two, the nightmare. Sometimes at night you have bad dreams. I used to get a lot as a kid. Sometimes you're a toga wearing lady who's out cold on her couch, and on top of her is a spooky denizen of the night who's staring at the viewer. Ooh, no thanks. Painted by Swiss artist Henry Fussell, it perhaps could be a manifestation of a woman he had fallen in love with, and maybe it was forbidden love. At least that's how the story goes, or so I'm told. I'm not too sure, but that little demon could be a problem, so we better lock it up in a safe place. That's why the painting right now is uh, located in De Detroit, of all places. It's in Detroit. It's a great place for it. Why not? Shout out to Detroit. How you doing? Number one, Dream of the Fisherman's Wife. The editors are going to have to blur some of this out, but... This is from the early 1800s in Japan, which was a very confusing and life-changing time for many in Japan. Why is that? Well, that's because erotic books had collections of images like this one in it, which in a nutshell depicts an octopus and a lady on a date. Except the date is already past the schnapps and the clam eating, and now the octopus and the lady are lovemaking. It's really weird, because that was a long time ago. At number 10, Olympia. In more modern times, our art has changed drastically. These days, some of the most provocative pieces gain the most notoriety and are highly praised, but back in the day, things were a lot different and revealing pieces were often quite controversial. Showing things like nudity and gore were highly criticized and many of these pieces caused mild uproar. This is the case with the painting titled Olympia by Edward Manet. This piece features a nude model being presented flowers by a servant. What caused so much controversy about this piece was not only the nudity, but also its context, so to speak. At the time when this painting was created, when viewers saw artwork featuring a nude woman, the subject was usually depicted in a more passive way. But with the Olympia piece, the woman is looking straight at the viewer and it made audiences a little uncomfortable. On top of that, it was also believed that the woman depicted in the painting was a lady of the night. This was widely thought because the name Olympia, the name of the piece, was often associated with women of this profession. As well, the painting looked to be set in a boudoir, which also backs up the suggestion of this woman's profession. What people found to be most scandalous was the fact that this woman in the image was modeled after a real person and not just a figment of the artist's imagination. At number 9, Le Déjeuner sur l'Herbe. As I mentioned previously, the presence of nudity in paintings was often pretty controversial back in the day, and we will see this quite a lot throughout this video. Depending on the context of the painting and its subject matter, some pieces can cause audiences to see it as too provocative. Another one of these paintings that faced backlash due to its subject matter is the piece Le Déjeuner sur l'Herbe by Edouard Manet. Yeah, the same guy who painted Olympia. In this painting, it features a naked woman surrounded by fully clothed men. This caused a scandal in the art world, and even when the painting was unveiled, it wasn't allowed to make its debut at the Salon in Paris because it was rejected and was instead exhibited at the Salon des Refusés. Even the style of this painting caused some controversy because of the stark contrast of light and dark in the painting as it went against the style of art at this time. Before we carry on talking about more paintings that caused some uproar, why not take a moment to leave a like this video if you're enjoying it so far and while you're at it consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this one. At number 8, The Last Judgment. 
If you would believe it, even the most famous painter Michelangelo faced controversy for his painting of The Last Judgment. This is the painting that covers the altar wall in the Sistine Chapel and is one of the most famous paintings, but it was also shrouded in scandal when the piece was first completed. In the painting, the artist depicts the second coming of Christ and God's final judgment on humanity. You see angels and saints in the painting, as well as the souls of people being dragged either to heaven or hell. It was a powerful artwork. But it was a powerful artwork, but because the painting featured mostly men who were drawn as nude, it made people pretty upset. This piece sparked a feud between Michelangelo and the Catholic Church, as they believed that the painting was too inappropriate for a place as sacred as the Sistine Chapel, and they were not happy with the artist's depiction of nude figures in that holy place. It wasn't until after Michelangelo passed away that the church got to tweak the painting to their liking, so they hired another artist to come and paint loincloths and fig leaves over the genitalia of the figures in the piece. Number 7. Persistence of Memory This is a painting I have seen many, many times in movies, TV, and well, it just gets thrown around a lot. For those at home, this is the very famous Salvador Dali painting with the melting clocks. I'm pretty sure it's even in an episode of Spongebob. I'm pretty sure it's the first time I saw it was in Spongebob. Usually the painting is used to show an ulterior world where time is nothing or the deterioration of self in the real world with time moving at a different pace. For me it reminds me of lost time or the anxiety of watching time slip away. For me that's personified in Majora's Mask. I gotta be back in the motel before the big scary moon falls so I can get a mask and then play the song of time again and pretend everything's normal and okay. <laughs> <laughs> Number 6. The Scream Edvard Munch's Scream may be the most recognizable art piece next to the Mona Lisa, and it's very unusual and horrifying. At least for me. Using a mix of warm and cool colors, you'd think it would make you feel warm and cozy. And yes, I remember some of my grade 2 art basics, like warm and cool colors. However, the first thing that's going to catch your eye is the screaming man with hands grasping his face in the foreground. Something like this. Who, honestly, if you look at long enough, at least to me, it looks like more of like a little gray man found at the Roswell incident than anything else. Supposedly, the interpretation of this piece is to be that of the horrors and anxiety of human existence. So, in a way, it's a mental health piece, way ahead of its time, even if it is horrifying. So that's that's kind of cool. Number five, the anguished man. I don't care who you are, but every family out there has one artifact or one heirloom in their house that just doesn't sit well with you. Please comment below and let me know. I'm, I'm actually curious. What, what, what's the heirloom? For me, it was, uh, well, it was a few things actually. My mom used to have this dancing skull at Halloween. It was really weird. My aunt has a lot of dolls. My aunt had a, a lot of dolls. There was one in particular that used to sit on the staircase. Did not like that. Whew. Well, that's probably where the anguished man came from. Same place the creepy dolls do. It all makes sense. There's, 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 a, there's a spooky realm, I'm sure of it. The anguished man is a painting of a man in anguish or in some sort of distress or a lot. And I'm not just saying this to be funny, but the painting is 100% bona fide scary. What's more unusual than that is that no one is sure of its origin or creator, just to add to the mystery and horror. The current owner of the painting says he got it from his grandmother, and the knowledge train stops there, folks. And it can stop there. I'm good. Don't need to know anymore after that. We're good. Number four, The Judgment of Cambius. This is a very lovely oil painting with a surprisingly good color depicting one of the worst things that we could do to another human being. I'll give you a second to guess what it is. Go ahead, take a guess. No, it's not sit through all eight seasons of the Ten Commandments. Now that's a joke about a Charlton Heston movie and how long it is. I can't sit through that movie anymore, man. God, it's so old. Well, speaking of classics, flaying, which is what you do when you skin another human being. Alive. Of course, why, why not? <laughs> this painting happens to be a depiction of a person judge getting flayed where later, not depicted in this art, his skin was used to make a very fine chair to sit in that his son was forced to sit in for his father's sins. Whew, man, that's a lot. That's heavy. That's heavy, man. At number three, Guernica. Back to Picasso, we have another one of his scandalous paintings. This next piece, titled Guernica, was considered one of Picasso's best works, but it was also one of his most controversial. This painting featured a lot of pain and suffering, specifically of animals and humans. It was pretty graphic, even with his signature cubic style. Picasso painted this piece in reaction to the bombing of Spain by the Germans in World War II. At the time, this piece was turning into war propaganda to oppose fascism, and the painting became a tie between politics and war. During the war, Spain was allied with the Germans, so this painting was controversial because it went against the government's position in the war since it was condemning the bombing and loss 
of Spanish lives. After the war was over, however, the controversy surrounding the painting died down as it was no longer relevant. At number two, the Holy Virgin Mary. This next piece of artwork is probably one of the strangest looking pieces on this list, but the controversy surrounding this painting was pretty juicy. The Holy Virgin Mary piece by Chris Ophelia debuted at the Sensations exhibit of young British artists at the Royal Academy of Art in 1996. It featured a black Virgin Mary in a blue cloak surrounded by images of female genitalia cut out from adult magazines and featured a bare breast made out of elephant dung. Yeah. The whole point of this piece was to highlight the stereotyping and sexualization of black women. Though it was a powerful piece, it was also subject to a lot of criticisms. Religious groups took great offense to the content of this piece and the sexual themes surrounding the Virgin Mary. On top of that, New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani said that the artwork was quote, sick and anti-Catholic and threatened to pull funding from the museum if the painting was not immediately removed. Even protesters tried to ruin the painting with white paint and horse manure. And finally, Finally, at number one, the origin of the world. Now here's the spiciest painting of them all. Probably won't be able to show a photo of this one unless it is heavily censored, but I'm sure if you really want to see it, you can Google it. The painting titled The Origin of the World by Gustave Courbet has been shocking viewers for over 150 years. This painting features a naked woman with her lady bits front and center. It was peak realism painting and it was actually never supposed to be public. The Origin of the World was originally a commission by a private buyer, but somehow the public got a look at the piece and it caused a scandal for just how racy it was. If you've seen the image, then you would know what I'm talking about. The painting marked peak realism and also served as almost an anatomical study. Let's just say that it was very detailed. No one was expecting that one. Yeah.